Uh, in today's video, I will explain to you the concept of second registry of ships or second registers of ships. Uh, this is an important topic uh, if you are going for oral examination. Sometimes a surveyor may ask you about uh, uh, flags of convenience and second registry because they are kind of interlinked. Now, previously I have explained the concept of uh, flags of convenience. I'll give you the link to that video in the description section below but today's video is on understanding second registry of ships so make sure that you understand what are flags of convenience first before you watch this video so flags of convenience i'll quickly summarize it for you that flags of convenience are certain countries uh, where the ship owners register their ships to enjoy the benefits of uh, let's say low taxation and more flexibility in operations but they are often criticized for having substandard uh, uh, substandards uh, uh, operating procedures and maintenance procedures because of which uh, flags of convenience are popularly looked down upon. Now, uh, what happened with flags of convenience was that uh, increasingly ship owners were registering their ships uh, under those flags of convenience like Panama, Liberia, Malta, etc. And uh, this led to the home state uh, losing out on ship registry. So, for example, if a ship owner is based in a country, let's say India, but they start to register ships in other flags of convenience like Panama, Liberia, Malta, uh, then India is losing out on uh, the registration of ships. All right, so this uh, second register was a response in that regard to the development of the so-called attractiveness of flags of convenience for ships in international commerce. In this regard, 11 countries established a, a concept called second registries for ships, especially over the period 1984 to 1998. Now, what was happening with this was that the ship owners were allowing ships registered under flags of convenience to also register under them, providing them with a second registry. All right. So, of course, like I said, the reason why ships were being flagged out and they were going to the flags of convenience were largely economic purposes. For example, a Norwegian ship owner could profitably operate his vessels under the flag of Panama or Liberia than under the traditional flag of Norway. So countries like Panama and Liberia who are known as the flags of convenience allowed the ship owner to hire crews from anywhere in the world and they charge reg registration and tonnage fees but little or no income tax on the wages of the seafarers or on the ship owning the corporation. And that is why for these reasons Panama and Liberia were called the flags of convenience. Now, what was happening with second registries is that these countries, countries like Denmark, UK, France, Portugal, Portugal and Norway were allowing the ship owners based in their country to register also under them, even if they have registered under the so-called flags of convenience. So the 11 registry systems evaluated are those of Britain under the Isle of Man, the Netherlands, Norway, France, Denmark, Belgium, Germany, Spain, Portugal and United States and Italy. These nations created the new ship registry systems because ship owners in each of these countries were increasingly transferring the registry of their ships and often the incorporation of the ship owning company itself also to the overseas flags of convenience. So what was happening in simple terms, the ship owners could have been based in any of these countries, but they were registering the, their ships in the flags of convenience and then slowly moving out their whole business to the other countries. Now, in this way, the countries were starting to lose their businesses. So, corporations moving out, companies moving out, shipping companies moving out, uh, com com countries were losing major businesses. And that's why they encouraged ship owners to uh, second register the ship under their uh, country as well. All right, so the flagging out of ships from Norway, Germany, when we say flagging out, we mean shifting to the flags of convenience. Uh, so this was threatening the domestic economy of the countries to varying extents. With the transfer of companies to the flag of convenience, the home country was losing not only the taxes and the employment, but was also facing the threat of the decline of the whole ship related business. Some of the traditional shipping countries were also facing economic disaster. 
in the case of United States, strategic rather than economic issues attracted the government's attention. Defense officials expressed concern that ships owned by Americans but registered abroad might not be available for a requisition or charter during a military conflict or a military operation. So that commercial support will not be provided to the American Navy. In what way is a second register different from a flag of convenience? I am sure you have understood the difference already now. But uh, while manning, taxation and other formalities are often simplified, making the second register a more economical flag to fly than the parent country's national flag, there must still be some form of genuine link between the owner and the flag state. Example, through a company established in the flag state. So the countries were encouraging the shipping corporations to not move out of their countries. They could register the ships under the flag of convenience, but the home country started to provide some benefits in terms of reduced taxation so that the business does not move out of their country. So a second register had some advantages of a flag of convenience, but also at the same time allowing the national flag to be flown on the ships that are registered under the flags of convenience, but because of the second registry, they could fly the national flag of the ships and also they didn't have to move out of the move out the whole business out of the home country